when so the body uh the emotions like i said of course the sages knew that our buddhas knew that enlightened people of the past knew that that the body is you can't treat the body and mind as separate the body and the mind are one unanimous whole it's a mind body complex it's not mind and body there is not a single thought you can have without it reflecting in the body there is nothing you can do in the body without it reflecting in the mind if the body feels good the mind must feel good if the mind feels good the body must feel good and vice versa okay so they, they are in this constant thanks to our nervous system the body and mind are in this constant interaction with each other and because of that we can enter the cycle from the cognitive space of understanding so sometime when you have right understanding our body starts to settle down because we understand this correctly for example the understanding of dukkha we are sitting the mind is caught up in thoughts and then suddenly because of the practice our work whatever we are learning we realize there it goes creating dukkha again there it goes creating dissatisfaction this is not okay this is not okay this is not okay right now is everything not okay right now do i need to be thinking of this no 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 it's not helpful i come back now this is a cognitive activity but immediately it will reflect in the body the body when you were in the thought process the body would have been in a dysregulated space the moment you will come back the body will start to regulate so very quickly the mind and body change with each other similarly similarly um when i when i sit with something in my body when i stay with something in my body my mind stills down and that's why in meditation we say you keep the body as still as possible so the mind is also able to become still so the mind body are continuously interacting with each other therefore any emotion that you have has a component of the mental aspect which is you know you are happy but then you feel happy in the body you feel relaxed and open and pleased or you feel bound up and tied and uneasy so the whole body is participating in the emotion we don't pay attention to the body and that's why we call it disembodiment because we are only caught up in the analysis of the mind and not paying attention to the body but as soon as we in include the body in our awareness of our emotional uh, space which means when i am having an emotion i look at my body also i say okay i am having this emotion so three things is or four things you can say is basically you pause and when you when you recognize you are in the middle of an emotion you recognize there is anger or fear or sadness you pause you name the emotion now that's a cognitive activity which is what am i feeling now and the feeling may not be so clear anger fear guilt shame it may be heartbreak it may be inadequate it may be uh, uneasy it may be unsettled okay just name it how do i feel now second step is you accept it this is what it is right now i don't have to fix this i don't have to resolve this i do not even want to reject this and say i don't want to feel this i just say this is what i'm feeling now so there's accept and then there is support and watch in the body so then i move into my body and say where in my body am i feeling this emotion and like ishita said she feels it in the head she was able to feel the stress in her head some of you might recognize it's in the stomach somebody may recognize it's in the chest my chest feels heavy my shoulders feel tight my neck feels stuck my legs feel lifted from the ground and that's why we did awareness of the feet last day, last uh, week just to notice the feet may feel ungrounded or even if they are on the ground they may feel light and lifted from the ground this is how the body is engaged with the emotion so the emotion is in the body in the mind now when you include the body in your understanding you give the emotion a lot of canvas you don't get stuck in the thoughts of fixing typically what we do is feel the emotion we do two things deny it suppress it distract don't want to feel it or the other thing we do is start to figure out how to fix it there are only two ways that we largely behave with our unpleasant emotions deny and fix 
So either the mind is engaged with more thought and fuel of whose fault, my fault, their fault, I should have done this, they should have said this, da 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 da. Maybe I can do this next time, I must work harder to do this, why I can't do this, whatever. Some version of that. Or I don't want to even look at it. Like Hussain said, ignorance is bliss. I'll go see Netflix. I'll go check my phone. I'll work. I'll eat. Any of these could be defenses against the emotion. So we defend against emotions. And before we know it, our whole life is nothing but a big fat defense against those feelings that we don't want to feel. Everything we do, all choices we make are pointing to what we are so afraid of feeling or what we don't want to feel. Now instead, the lighter way is we pause, when we name the emotion, we accept, this is okay, I'm feeling this and then we notice it in our body. This is how my body feels. So you give the emotion a wider present moment mindful canvas. You integrate everything that is being felt by feeling the body and you stay with the body. And what you have practiced this week in body scan is watching body sensations without getting engaged and fixing them. You practice the same thing, watching body sensations without fixing them. It's the same practice. 